Hello, this is Jeff with Controlled Elements, heating and air conditioning company. Today we are going to take out an old standing pilot gas valve and replace it with a Robert Shaw intermittent pilot ignition system. Um, right here is the old gas valve. You can see these two wires right here actually coming off a transformer. This first side of the transformer goes out to the thermostat line, comes back and goes straight into the gas valve. The other side of the transformer is going right there to the limit switch. It comes out and actually goes down to a pilot safety switch, just a two wire pilot switch. Comes back out of the pilot switch and energizes the gas valve. So in this situation, we need to take out this old gas valve, the pilot tubing. I'm going to disconnect the wiring. And we've also got to take out this pilot hood with that two-wire switch. we got to retrofit it with a new pilot hood that will take a spark rod and sensor. And that's all built into one. That's what this guy is right here. It actually creates your spark and then it also senses if we've got the pilot flame. So here's the new gas valve. Right there is a little arrow indicating the flow of gas. Go ahead and hook that up with your inlet. And then your outlet to your manifold. You've got a connection right there. It says pilot. And then we just got your on off. And you've got your common, your main valve, and your pilot valve connection on the top. I'll show you how to wire this up after we get it in place. So let's go ahead and pull this valve out install the new valve. We're going to connect a wiring harness based on the schematic that they give us uh, with this retrofit kit. It'll go from this control module that we're going to mount inside the heater cabinet to the gas valve and then you've got your sensor slash spark rod at your pilot hood. So let's go ahead and install this get it wired up and see how it goes. Okay so I've got gas line taken out that goes to this valve. Uh, this heater was hard piped from the shutoff through the furnace cabinet to this union and then to this old gas valve. Anytime I see a unit that's been hard piped you know through the sidewall of the cabinet I'll go ahead and, and upgrade that. Um, also a lot of times you'll see the, the flex line the gas line going through the side of the cabinet um, we don't want to see this flex line going through the side of the cabinet or the rigid pipe. Uh, we'd like to see some separation from the gas line coming from the building to the heater uh, in case of an earthquake or something depending on what environment you're in. We're in California and what we like to see is you've got your shut off, have your gas flex here and then we like to see a rigid piece of pipe from your valve to the outside of the cabinet and then go ahead and attach the flex gas line to that. That way the, the, the piping coming out of the wall and the heating section can move independently if, if we get a big earthquake or something. Um, I've got this valve loose. So we're just going to untwist this. I put a pipe wrench on this and go ahead and just back up your manifold. The last thing you want to do is, is tweak this manifold, the burner manifold. So we're going to end up taking this off and then we will go ahead and just use some pipe dope and you might need a reducer from three quarter inch to half inch which is what a majority of these burner manifold pipes are and we're going to just tie this valve in but before i put that valve in once i've got uh, some open area after taking this gas valve out i'm going to remove this hood that covers up where the four burners are and accesses the heat exchanger and I'm going to go ahead and try and get my pilot hood done at that point in time since I got a little bit more space to work with. So let's go ahead and try and get that done. Okay, I pulled out this whole burner assembly from this furnace cabinet. Um, you can see that uh, there's a bunch of uh, rust and debris uh, built up around the crossover burner, which is this guy right here, and here, and here. It just ignites obviously off of this pilot hood and the crossover causes the gas to jump to each of the uh, four burners. 
Um, what the goal here is to get the new pilot hood in with this spark rod. Now, obviously, uh, they're giving me just this little adapter here to work with. I'm going to see if that'll work for a new pilot assembly that I've got. Um, but we've got to get our pilot flame obviously above this crossover. Um, and also, we've got to get the spark rod in a good position to where it can ignite the pilot and also sense the pilot flame. And what I'm going to do, I brought this burner out to my truck because it's covered in so much debris. I carry a tank of CO2 on my truck, um, just sitting over here. Tied a hose to it. You can use compressed air or CO2. And I'm going to go ahead and just take my CO2 and blow out this burner manifold, clean out these four tubes. And that'll prevent a callback in case they get you know a bunch of this debris uh, stuck in that crossover or whatnot. It's a good idea. It's going to take me 10 minutes. Could save me a trip back out here. All right, let's get this cleaned up. Get this pilot hood in. And we'll reinstall this back inside the uh, furnace cabinet. Okay, we're about ready to put this back in the furnace cabinet. I went ahead and I had to kind of adapt with what I was given to get this pilot hood to fit. Put in a new pilot hood, use their old bracket right here. It's got a little kick to it. You want to just make sure that your pilot flame is, is sitting over your burner section so it's going to ignite. You don't want it too low, you don't want it too high. You'd like to see your burner flame from your pilot just above where the ignition is going to take place on your crossover manifold. And then on this sensor sparker combination that they give you in the Robert Shaw uh, retrofit kit, to get that hooked up, I put it in the section right here where you normally would put a thermocouple. And actually they give you a screw with a little nut on the bottom. Put the screw through where the thermocouple would go, tightening that spark rod. And the spark rod actually comes with, the spark rod is, is straight uh, out of the box. And you've got to give it a little bit of a bend. And you like to run it on a horizontal plane, even with the top of your pilot hood. And what I like to do is give it an eighth inch gap from the end of your tip to your pilot hood. And that's where your spark is going to take place in your pilot ignition. I'll usually just take a tape measure, get it in there, measure your gap to your pilot hood. You're looking for an eighth of an inch. Um, that's it on that. Let's go ahead and, and get this in. Um, we'll go ahead and get it wired up, put the module in, and take it from there. Okay, we got the pilot hood in. I got this pilot tubing hooked up to a new pilot hood assembly. Robert Shaw with the intermittent uh, retrofit kit. Uh, they give you a, a spark rod. It's actually a straight spark rod when they give it to you. You gotta bend this tip so that it makes contact with the top of your pilot hood. I like to take a backup pair of needle nose on the bottom of this so you don't break this ceramic enclosure around this sensor tip. Just back it up and then take your channel locks up top and give yourself a nice bend. But you want to go ahead and measure it first. And what you're trying to get to is get your rod even with the top of your pilot hood on the same horizontal plane. And you want about an eighth of an inch separation between the top of the metal pilot hood and the end of your sparker sensor tip. And that way you get a nice good spark across this gap and also a good ignition. Obviously if it's at the top of the hood, the gas is going up at about a 45 degree angle. It's going to have no problem uh, finding ignition. I also went ahead and hooked up the pilot tubing to this pilot uh, hood before we put this burner back in the cabinet just to make it a lot easier on us. So let's go ahead and put this back in. We'll put the module in, get the valve wired up and then test everything out, test for gas leaks, check operation, and that should be it. Okay, we got the valve installed. Went ahead and changed out this pipe nipple like we talked about. Hooked up the gas flex on the outside here. You wanna go ahead and hook up your pilot tubing to your valve, and I mounted the module right here. They give you a two-sided sticky pad in the Robert Shaw uh, replacement kit. 
I use that to secure the valve here. You can also run a couple screws through these two openings in this module to secure it somewhere in the furnace cabinet. Take your wiring harness and hook it up based on the instructions that come with the valve. It's pretty simple. They tell you up here what the connections are for. You've got your sensor uh, slash a sparker. And then these ones here, you got three that go to the valve. And you've got your thermostat uh, transformer connections. This is the transformer coming out. What we've done is just ran a wire through the high limit switch and then into the thermostat and back out to the valve. The other side of the transformer goes straight to the valve. Well, not the valve, but the module, and the module feeds the valve. So let's go ahead and test this sucker. It's also very important make sure you get a good ground to your valve. The instructions will tell you uh, each valve is different on where to set up your ground connection but make sure you've got a good ground. So we're, the only other thing to remember inside it the heat anticipator. If your thermostat has a heat anticipator, if it's an older one, I believe they want you to set it at about 0.7. Um, check with the instructions it'll tell you where to set the heat anticipator based on the output of this valve. Okay, when you first start up a retrofit like this and you've opened up the gas system, uh, you're going to have to purge some air out of the lines before you get good gas going to your pilot. Um, I've already done this, so let's go ahead and bypass the thermostat and test the operation. Make sure the pilot is in the proper space, uh, the proper spot for the main burner. Let's make sure we get proper ignition. And then of course, test all your tubing for gas leaks. So I'm going to take my alligator clips and a bypass. Okay, we had a quick spark, a quick ignition with the pilot, and within four or five seconds, we should have main burner. And now it's going to go ahead and function just like the old standing pilot system. And you've got your fan switch, which is right behind that box, and it gets upwards of 140 degrees or so. It's going to kick the fan on and you're just going to test out the rest of the operation of this unit. I like to test these a couple times and very important to just make sure that just make sure that your pilot is in the proper location versus your main burner. Make sure you got a nice fluid ignition and that it, it doesn't lag and cause a rollout flame. That's it. Uh, good luck and uh, we'll see you on the next one.